Hello, and welcome to the fourth and final episode in my Airbending Staff instructional series. If this is your first introduction to the project, check out the links in the description to see how we got this far. Once you're all caught up, I look forward to sharing with you now how it all comes together. If you've been following along with my videos, then you've watched me take some oak dowels and turn them into a truly ornate and beautiful airbending staff. Along the way, I've added a lot of details which are not in the original design from Avatar The Last Airbender. Aang's staff is pretty vanilla, just brown wood and red fabric. This works great on the small TV screen of a cartoon show. But I believe that if we translated it into the real world and imagined that air nomads really existed, then I bet that they would put a lot of love and detail into their work. For this reason, I've added things like scrolling air designs in gold leafing. Today, we're going to finish the project by turning the staff into a glider. I plan to put the same ornate detail into the glider wings as I have on the rest of the staff. Now, you could skip this completely. If you just do the wings in a solid color, it'll be totally cartoon accurate. But if you want to go the extra mile and make this extra beautiful to put on your wall, then join me as we learn yet another new skill. This time, it's silk painting. The first step to designing patterns for the wings is knowing the size and shape of canvas you have to work with. Use the slats on the staff like a protractor to trace out the shape of the wings on a sheet of butcher paper. The small lower wings are 6 inches wide, and the main wings are 18 inches wide. My design calls for colored edges, which I also mark out at this stage. The borders are 1 inch thick at the outer margin of the wings, and 1 half inch at the inner margin. Finally, trace an extra 1 quarter inch around the whole pattern, which will be used to make rolled hems and attach the fabric to the wing slats. Decorate the butcher paper with the designs you want on your glider wings. I chose spirals and curves to abstractly represent the air element. Next, you need to construct simple wooden frames that will fit around your drawings. The frame for the primary wings will be quite large, so you want to reinforce the corners. Just be sure that no part of the wood overlaps with your designs. Let's talk for a minute about the fabric we'll be using for the wings. What I have here is a gold-colored Habotai silk, which is a pretty traditional fabric for silk painting. Now, silk is a little bit pricey, so if you want to use polyester instead, that's totally fine. That being said, whatever fabric you buy needs to have three qualities. The first is that it needs to be very thin. This is because the entire wingspan of the glider needs to roll up and fit inside of the airbending staff. If you have a thick fabric, it's just not going to fit. The second quality, and perhaps the most important, is that there can be no stretch. So that means that no knit is going to work, it's weaves only, and even among weaves, there can be no elasticity. If there is any elasticity to the fabric, then you'll cut it out and make it look perfectly sized for the wing slats we already built. And then you'll roll up the fabric inside of the staff. And when you do that, it'll get stretched out. And the next time you try to bring the wings out, you'll find that the fabric is floppy and doesn't sit right. The third quality that you need to have is a front and back that look the same as each other. A lot of fabrics have a distinct front side and back side, but because people will see this staff in its glider form from all angles, we need to make sure that it looks the same regardless of what side of the staff you're looking at. Let's get into the silk painting. Use thumbtacks to secure a piece of silk to your wooden frame. Pull the silk tight, but avoid tension lines by making sure that no two tacks are positioned directly across from one another. Place the silk directly on your drawing and use a vanishing ink marker to outline your pattern. Work quickly, because vanishing ink disappears over time as it reacts with water in the air. While the ink is still visible, turn the silk frame over and trace your designs again with a substance called gutta. I'm using the copper-colored Pebio brand gutta, but any color would work because it will be removed later. 
Gutta is used to limit the spread of paint in your silk. Apply a generous, thick bead and be sure that there are no gaps in the outline you draw, because the worst thing that could happen would be for the paint to escape through a chink and ruin your design. After the gutta is dry, you can start painting. I use a one-to-one -one ratio of Seta Silk Chestnut and Hermes Red colors. Wipe any excess paint off the brush because you don't want any drips outside your target area. Place the brush in the middle of your designs. The paint will flow through the silk until it is stopped by the gutta. If you paint too close to the gutta, then drops can form on the underside of the silk and flow past the barrier. Don't use too much pressure. If the silk touches the table underneath, then that will also allow the paint to escape under the gutta. Apply a second or third coat until the color is deep and consistent, and you have finished an obligatory ragtime montage. <laughs> We set the color into the fabric by ironing it. Take the side that has the gutta on it and turn the fabric over so that that's facing down. If you're using silk like I am, then you'll want to take precautions like putting your iron on the silk setting and covering the silk with a damp cloth. We'll go over that for a little bit with my iron and then we'll be ready to remove the gutta and use this fabric in the final airbending staff. Gutta is water soluble, so it will come right off the fabric after a brief rinse in the sink. Let the silk air dry and iron out any wrinkles. Cut the fabric around one quarter inch larger than the wing dimensions on all sides, and apply an anti-fray solution to protect the edges. One traditional way to hem silk is with a hand-rolled edge. A sewing needle helps to roll the fabric, then thread is passed around the roll every centimeter or so to tack it in place. In between the tacks, the thread sits inside the rolled edge so that it won't catch on anything. Rinse and repeat this process on the inner and outer perimeters of each wing, and then iron the edges flat. To install the wings, first pass the silk through the middle of the glider shaft. Open the wing slats and ensure the fabric is positioned exactly where you want it. Make sure the slats, which were earlier left unglued, are closest to the ground at this point. Run a bead of glue along the top of the steel rod at the center of the staff. Rotate the rod so the glue faces toward the fabric, then gently lift the silk up to meet it. Close the wing slats in order to lock the steel and silk together in this position while the glue dries. Once the connection in the center of the staff is dry, you can attach the tops of the fabric to their respective slats by putting some glue in the slat grooves and then placing a little silk between the steel and wooden components of the slat so that the metal, wood, and fabric all bond together. The components can be clamped with a little wire twisted around the slat until the adhesive has fully cured. Any excess silk can be cut off with a knife and the edges should be treated with anti-fray solution. Last of all, with the rest of the wing slats in the positions you want, use the vanishing fabric pen to mark the location for attachments, which I will explain in just a moment. I use a couple of colors of ribbon to secure the wing fabric to the slats. I use red on the edge so that it blends right in there and that slips over the end and then this golden ribbon is tied up here. Any knot will work for this, but I'm fond of using a square knot because it lies flat and looks symmetrical. If you plan to transform from staff to glider often, lock the wings open short term using the beaded chains attached to the hinges. If you plan to display the glider for hours or days, however, you can reinforce the primary wings by passing a 1 8 inch steel rod through the tube in the uppermost slat. Use another rod to help ram the reinforcement straight through the middle of the staff and into the tube on the opposite side. To convert the glider back to staff form, remove the chain locks, then spin the spheres below the wings to rotate the central rod and neatly roll the silk up. 
If you do this with the staff upside down, then gravity will naturally tension the wings to make the roll nice and tight. Unfasten the slats from the silk as you get to them. Finally, lock the slats closed by setting the brass rods in notches just below the wings and rotating the copper lock to cover the notches. The same procedure is followed to roll up the large wings. There might be a couple inches of loose fabric when you're done, but it can be easily shimmed in place with a credit card. And that's it! With that, the entire staff is finished, top to bottom. I'm really excited by this. You may have only been watching on YouTube for a few minutes, but for me it's been a six month journey. And I'm really happy to see it turn out so well. If you wanted to know how to build it, now you know.